Whoa. Uh, excuse me, this is supposed to be my demo today. Well, fight me for it. All right, well, today we're going to be demoing the Natural Language Processing API on Google Cloud Platform. My name is Stephanie Wong, customer engineer here at Google and part-time Shark. Hi, I'm Jatin. I'm also uh, a customer engineer here at Google Cloud. That's my day job, and I work my night shifts as Batman. All right, Jatin, what are we going to be doing? So we'll be showing you how to use Google uh, Cloud's Natural Language API, and uh, we'll show you how easy it is in five minutes. All right, well, we're going to have to battle it out, and you decide who the winner is. Let's dive in. All right, so let me walk you through the basic setup that running the NLP API takes. First of all, you create a project within Google Cloud Console, which we already have here. The name of that project is nlp code lab take 5 We go to um, the APIs and services, and out here, within the dashboard, we click Enable APIs and services. Here, you will be able to find the natural language API, which is right there. Once you go in this page, you will see the option Enable. Um, in my case, I've already set this up because it does take a few minutes to activate that API and generate an API key. Once you have that enabled, you can go back and you will go into the APIs and services credentials tab and copy the API key out for yourself. And after that has happened, you can save it into a variable called API key to have it easily accessible for me to be able to make API calls going forward instead of me having to paste it in every single time. Awesome. And just to explain, right now we're using our Cloud Shell editor, which is basically a shell that's provided to you in your web console UI directly so that you can manage any of your GCP resources. So here we're in our local directory and we've exported the API key. The next thing that we're going to do is analyze our text um, and we've saved that text in a JSON file that you see here in our inline editor, which is a request.json file. So here you can see the NLP API can actually take requests in the format of plain text or HTML, which means that you can also analyze text coming from HTML web pages. Here we've chosen plain text, and we have a sentence here about J.K. Rowling, which reads, Joanne Rowling, who writes under the pen names J.K. Rowling and Robert Galbraith, is a British novelist and screenwriter who wrote the Harry Potter fantasy series. All right, so now that we have that saved, we're actually going to run a curl command to send the request up to the NLP API. So I have the request here saved. And I'm going to go ahead and run the command, and it's going to give us back some results. All right, after running that curl call, we see that the results um, have come out in form of a JSON request, which can be analyzed in the application itself that you're using or within the Cloud Shell itself. Um, I'll go through what that actually, what the results actually mean. So this JSON file shows that name Robert Galbraith is a type of person, and this is the Wikipedia URL that they have, which points to the Wikipedia page of J.K. Rowling, since she wrote under the pseudonym of Robert Galbraith. Um, it shows us the salience score of the result as well, which is the Robert Galbraith here. And it's always going to be between 0 and 1. It points out, points out how crucial that entity is to the whole sentence, to the structure of that whole sentence. Now, we'll come down to the mentions portion of this JSON, JSON um, result that we have. And we see that the content entities like Joanne Rowling, Rowling, Novelist, and Robert Galbraith all point to the same exact entity, which is Robert Galbraith, a.k.a. J.K. Rowling. All right, so what we're going to do now is replace the text that we have in the request.json file that we've created and replace the text. And you can see here that now the sentence reads, Harry Potter is the best book. I think everyone should read it. So we're going to test out whether the NLP API can analyze sentiment of this, these two sentences here. So I have a new curl command that I'm going to run. And you see here it's now output in information about the sentiment of the text that we've sent the request as. So notice that we get two types of sentiment values. We have one for our entire document as a whole, and we have also a, a sentiment rating broken down by each sentence. So you see here the first sentence is positive. It has a 0.7 rating, and the magnitude is 0.7. The score is also 0.7 here. And then the second sentence is pretty neutral, 0.1 instead. And that's the sentence that reads, I think everyone should read it. So you can see here the comparison between the sentences, Harry Potter is the best book, and the more neutral sentence, I think everyone should read it. Alrighty. So after that, the next function we will be looking at here is the text annotation. Um, and we'll dive deeper into that one. So to, for that, I'll use another request.json file, which I have copied. And here it is. The content of that is Joanne Rowling is a British novelist, screenwriter, and film producer. Now I will run through the API call to analyze this. Paste it into Cloud Shell. And we have the results. So let's break down the response. 
Part of speech tells us that Joanne is a noun. Dependency edge includes data that you can use to create a dependency parse tree of the text. Essentially, this is a diagram showing how words in a sentence relate to each other. All right, so the last thing that we're going to do is do an entity analysis for text that's actually in another language. So we're going to replace the JSON file once more with text that relates to a sentence in Japanese, and we're going to run a new curl command. And just to give you an idea of how many languages NLP API actually supports, um, some of them include Chinese, English, French, German, Italian, and Japanese, and many more as well. So here's a new curl command, and we're going to run that. And again, it did entity analysis and identifies the type for each portion of the sentence and also actually leads to the Wikipedia URL in Japanese. One interesting thing I would like to point out about this curl call or this API call is that nowhere in this curl call or this API call you had to justify or define what language the text is in. So just to conclude what all we have covered today in this Take 5 demo. We've created a natural language API request and called the API with curl. We extracted entities and run, ran sentiment analysis on text with the natural language API. We performed linguistic analysis on text to create dependency parse trees. And we created a natural language API request in Japanese. All right. Well, honestly, I think I was the winner there. So go shark, go shark, go shark. Nah, 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 nah. It's the Batman. Batman wins every single time. Well, honestly, I think all of you are the actual winners here. Because now you know how to use NLP API on GCP. All right. Well, thanks, Jutton. Until next time on Take 5. I don't have hands, I only have fins.